Hey, it's your average photographer with another video for you. I was reviewing my previous video of free time-lapse app for Sony cameras and I found that there's now another one on the Open Memories page. So I wanted to show you guys what it's like and how it is. Um, sorry about the video quality. I'm using my cell phone on a selfie stick because I need to show you my camera for this video. But uh, let's get right in. Here we are on the Open Memories website. If you watched my previous video, I showed you how to use the Better Manual app written by Obsidian. Uh, that app does a pretty good job, but there's a new one that just got uploaded by Jonas called Time Lapse that I think is much better for people that only care about getting a time lapse. Before we go into the app, I want to take you to the web page that this app is hosted on. This is the repository on GitHub that Jonas has. If we take a look at his commit history, you can see that he started work on this way back in February of 2017, but just this week in October, he did some bug fixes and updated some stuff, and he just barely got it uploaded to the Open Memories page so that it shows up as one of the apps on their list, um, so that it shows up here. Um, there are a few things to note of this app. I highly recommend going to his webpage. I will link to it in the description. But I highly recommend reading this on your own before you try using it at all or try installing it. Um, he has some things to be aware of and some instructions on how to use the app properly. The biggest thing is that you can't change your shutter speed, your aperture, or anything like that within the time-lapse app. So what you'll want to do is probably go into manual mode, get everything set up properly first, get the focus right, get your shutter speed set, get your aperture set, and then you open up his time-lapse app, which will allow you to set the interval and the amount of pictures. I'll show you this in the app itself in just a minute. For any of you who watched my other video on the Better Manual app by Obsidian, you may have installed using your browser there were some recent firmware updates to Sony cameras uh, that made that no longer functional. So now you should use the PMCA GUI. There's an installer for Mac and for Windows. If you're on Linux, I'm sorry, um, but most of you probably aren't. Or if you're like me and you've already installed the Open Memories App Store to your camera, you can actually just install the time-lapse app directly from the App Store. So I'm going to go into the application list. The Open Memories App Store allows me to install any of the apps on the Open Memories webpage. So it's going to load up the list. And here we see all the apps that are on that webpage. Um, now I'm going to install the time-lapse app. Something to be aware of, there are a couple of known issues listed here. Um, the biggest one is that you can't have a shutter speed longer than the shoot interval. So if you are taking pictures every one second, you can't have a shutter speed of two seconds, or three, or five seconds. Um, that's pretty common sense. Okay, now that the app is installed, let's open it up. So if we hit the menu button, this will take us back to that list, hit the menu button again, and it takes us out of that uh, Open Memories App Store app. So we can go back into our application list, and there we see the time-lapse app right there. Once we go into the app, we'll see that it's very basic. There's not a lot we can do. If you hit the left-right button, it takes you between two different tabs. On the right tab, you just choose whether or not to use silent shutter. I have the A6500, which supports silent shutter. On other cameras, I'm not sure if this will work or what will happen if you have it selected and the camera doesn't support it. If you have a different camera, please try this out and let me know. But if we go back to the main one, we can choose the interval between pictures taken. 
we can have it be as short as one second and as long as 30 minutes. Up till two minutes, it's pretty granular. And then after two minutes, it just increases by one minute. So let's take this back down to one second between our shots. And then you define how many shots you want. So let's say we want 380 shots. On that far left value, six minutes, that is how long it will take to actually take the pictures. 15 seconds is how long the resulting video will be, the time-lapse video, if we use these frames per second. So it defaults to 24, but then you can change it to whatever your preferred video setting is for frames per second. I'll keep it at 24. So this will run for six minutes and it will give me a 15 second video. Then down here we have a start button and a close button. Also this trash button and the menu button will exit out of the app if you want. But I'll just hit start and it'll start taking its pictures. So as it's running, you can see the count of how many pictures is taken. It doesn't give you a preview, which is unfortunate, but that's okay as long as you've set it up properly beforehand. If you want to prematurely end the time lapse, you just hit the, the trash can button down in the bottom right of your camera. When the time lapse is finished, it says so on the screen and tells you to press menu to exit. Once you do so, it takes you back to the main page. I tested the app out by doing a time lapse of my road. Uh, these are five second pictures with two seconds in between each shot. Unfortunately, just like the Better Manual app by Obsidium, this app can't output a video file, so you have to take all of the images taken by this app and create your own time lapse using them. Overall, I thought the app was really good. Thank you, Jonas, for creating the app and for uploading it. I'm glad that there's another option out there. And thanks to all of you for watching. Hopefully you learn from it and hopefully this helps you. Uh, thanks. Have a good day.